Feeder. Come back around on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. Yeah, I'm with him as well, Steve Merchant. Just thinking of dropping that. What? Just thinking of dropping that, just going, because it's just too, that's all that. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton too. I mean, get to the music, so it's, hi, I'm Ricky Gervais, this is XFM. Sure. Here's Radiohead. Yeah. Some, they'll come out, that was Radio and XFM, I'm Ricky Gervais. Tony Blair, what's he all about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of- Snap, uh, yeah. Fast, because I quite, uh, on a serious note, and you've always been saying it, um, I listened to an old show, because when Carl was compiling those things, I listened to an old show, and I listened to me, and I'm- I'm really concentrating now, because I sounded like the most inarticulate, brain-damaged old drunk <laughs> I have ever heard given a show. Yeah. I mean, I was shocked. Not finishing sentences, leaving out words, slurring, just doing noises yeah. that you understand because you know me. Yeah. So I'm really gonna make an effort for the listener. Yeah. It's not gonna happen, is it? You're gonna but, give up after about but three But I thought reference. you were joking. And I thought it was like, mm -hmm. oh, he's to, to taking the- there? Did it yeah. then, you see? Again, I don't quite know what that sentence meant. No, but- well, of course, I've got also your body language and your facial yeah. gestures, but obviously the listeners have got nothing else. Got they've just the got the in. voice. They've yeah. just got the voice for it. That's all they've got. That's all they can rely on. Yeah. And, uh, and when Carl Pilkinson is the man holding the show together- When he's that's the most quite damning. articulate. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. How, how did I come across? You came across as lovely. I mean, I, I did an interview yesterday, right, and I was trying to describe you to this journalist, and I was going, it's like a cat can talk. Because the things you say, I just want to know what your world is. You know when a cat comes in, you go, where have you been? And it looks as you're like, you know, you could, it can nearly understand you. And you're like, I wonder, I'd love to know what that cat thinks. And with you, it's almost like we've got one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like that? No, you can also lick your own no. testicles, I think, can you? <laughs> so, yeah. Do you play the doves? Doves. Caught by the river on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Welcome. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. <laughs> Were you asked to appear on Celebrity Fat Club? No, I, I uh, no, was I there wasn't. any? Was there, was there? Seriously, did an invite come No, in? I don't, I don't think they did. I, I, I knew about it and I was waiting for the call and I was yeah. gonna be insulted but it didn't come. It didn't come. It didn't How come. much are you looking forward to it? <laughs> I'm quite excited about it. I, I, I really am. excited to it, yeah, I don't yeah, know if people know, are you aware of this, Carl? This is this Celebrity Fat Club. It's a new, uh, one of those reality shows. It's ten celebrities, I think. They're all overweight, uh, and they've gotta lose weight over the course of the series. And they're, um, and they're celebrities. And they're celebrities. That's why I've called it that. Celebrity Fat Club. So yeah. they got. Well, I'm very excited because one of them is, you know, that guy who was in Pop Idol but didn't win in the end, that really big fat guy, Rick, Rick. Waller, Fats Waller, as I call him. And, uh, I was reading about him on the, in the, uh, on the web earlier. Um, it says, uh, he's been told to lose 17 stone because they reckon he might be dead by the age of 40 if he doesn't lose weight. Seriously. How old is he now? I don't know how old he is. He's only in his 20s, isn't he? Well, that's still a good but 20 it says, years it says, of it, it says, uh, he was shocked to find he weighed 31 stone when he stepped on the scales at the start of the show. 31 stone? 31 stone. But I love that's the fact- That's really big. I like the fact it says he was shocked to find he weighed it. Yeah. I had no inclination. I'd got- I'd got- I'd got- I'd, I'd kept my eye off the ball. <laughs> exactly. That must be all those breakfasts. I haven't stood on the scales for years and I didn't know how much I weighed, Rick told the son. 31 stone, right, that is having- that is- that is having a man on your back and carrying a man in your- just yeah. basically two men are going everywhere. It is obscene, because he looks- have you seen him? He looks like one of those people who's wearing one of those inflatable sumo outfits. Yeah. He's just a little head and like a sort of- oh, We're not- we're not having a go at, um, fat people. I'm having a go at him, really. No, because it might be glandular. It's not, it's greed. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what? I- this is true. I- when I did- I did that Room 101, and I did one they cut out completely. I don't think I'd cut it out on taste, I think it was just too long. Um, and I- and one of the ones I put in was fat people who say it's glandular, right? And they'd done the research and- 2% of obese people can claim it's glandular. The rest, they just eat too yeah. much. But right? the thing about Waller is he was going on there, gone on the telly, going, it's good, what a wonderful role model I am for people who don't conform to the usual pop star sort of stereotype. No, you're not a role model for anyone. You are a fat pig of a man. I'm sorry, right, but you are, no, right. Rick, but be honest with you, it is obscene. It's, it's not his weight that d disturbs me more, it's his gums. Well. Are, oh, they've been through a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Haven't they? <laughs> they have been The weight does consume me slightly. Did you- do you remember when he did his version of I Will Always Love You? Yeah, but the-, the I thought he was just singing about like a buffet or <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Outside the chip shop. <laughs> yeah. Go away, Mr. Waller. Yeah. Do do, no, just- just let me watch the uh, kebab rotate <laughs> once more. No! Can I lick the fat off the floor? No! <laughs> you can't. I just imagine those people who run all-you-can-eat buffets, when they hear him coming, they shut yeah. the door. We it's close. like a, it's one of those 1920s speakeasy. The front changes <laughs> into like a laundrette. <laughs> Just move on, fats. It's not. <laughs> it's, I can smell chip fat. No, 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 no. Move but, on. On you but, go. But um, I mean, we're not Olympic fat 
Brits. They are fucking. The thirty-one stone is sort of you know quite big. But the American, that one, did you see that one? Seriously, we talked about it before. That one on Jerry Springer, and he was seventy-five stone. Did you see seventy-five? It was in his bed. Honestly, it looked like a. It looked like a. Um, uh, I don't know, sort of molten lava yeah. in his bed. And it was it was actually sad, and I was really sad, because he was, you know, he was in tears and he was going, this is it, I'm gonna do it. And Jerry Springer took the wall down and they got him, that to get him in a special ambulance and everything. But my point is this, right? When he got to say 50 stones, didn't he go, that's a lot, innit? I gotta be careful. For a human. Exactly. You know, for, for <laughs> yeah. someone that lives on land. Yeah. That yeah, is, exactly. that is, I tell you, what the, I mean, the fact is they have to have special weighing equipment, so wasn't that a clue? That must have been. The fact they had to get in someone from next door to lift up a bit to tell him yeah. how much he weighed. Yeah, the fact that he featured on the Ordnance Survey map <laughs> should have been a clue <laughs> that We've given it's you your own mess. Yeah, you are, yeah. Stop eating. eating. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Always amazing to hear that, isn't it? Really? It's Sugar. fantastic. It's such I can't a change great your mind. tune. I was listening to Copper Blue, the album from which yeah. I was taken again. It's just fantastic. Old it really was. Old Moldy. Moldy old Doe, yeah. as I call oh, him. Exactly. Bob. You've got a real problem with Rick Waller, haven't you? I just. He's, I, he's he, he turns my stomach. I know, but don't. Because he's arrogant that. as well. Though. Exactly. I That's the problem. Don't, don't explain to people that. No, he know, is a bit it's arrogant. His, it's his, his whole thing that you, it's the whole package, so to speak, that you don't Well, there's another thing in this quote because it's not just the fact that he eats too much. He, uh, he tried apparently to lose some and, uh, it says, he said, the first month I lost eleven pounds, the next I lost a stone, but in the third my body did somersaults and I put on nine pounds. I had a slip up. Yeah. I can't say when, why or how, but it just sneaked up on me. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. Don't That's believe it just sneaked that, up on that him. That body's never done a somersault no. in its life. No. It just uh, sneaked, sneaked up, up on him. me, yeah. I, that's, I, that's it that. was the cakes again. Yeah. <laughs> it was the same old cakes as before. It was exactly the same Sleep, sleep eating. Yeah. It's called. It was the KFC bucket again. Oh, it was the family sized KFC bucket oh, for breakfast. Dear. Poor man. The other thing is that the, I don't think that's a very good shock tactic for a doctor to tell a twenty-something. Well, to be honest, you've got twenty years to live. Yeah, that's not. You know, and when I was 20. twenty, the thought of dying at forty was fine. Yeah, I didn't want to live to forty. Yeah. I just thought, oh, what can you do when you're forty? Yeah, just laying around <laughs> doing nothing, eating, eating cheese. cheese. And then you got there <laughs> and you discovered. <laughs> no, but someone said the dream came um, true. Sophie here sent me something and she said, I, I realise you're not Graham Norton, but I had to send you this. And she sent me the top of a little cream cheesy thing. And it's, it's, the brand name is Gervais. How oh, God, that from, is. Have you been. They've named a cheese after I you. Think it, I think it's a big French company and this is from the Czech Republic. It's all over Europe. And so it That would be a dream come true, wouldn't it, if they named a cheese after no, you? No, I think it's, I think it's, uh, probably, you know, ancestors. And so I've cheeses in my blood. Sure. Quite it literally. It literally is, yeah. yeah. It, Another it, heavy Friday it, night, was it? It, 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 it comes out of pores like those Play-Doh things. Yeah. I can squeeze out different shapes. Jane, bring the Stilton in. <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this isn't fried. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so, um, we can't really have a go at Rick Waller. I, 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 I eat too much, but, but I, you, yeah, I, I, but I you're not big. I mean, one of the other contestants on that, on the, uh, Fat Club, Celebrity oh, yeah, Fat Club, it? is, uh, another one is Jono, Jono Coleman. Oh, we love Jono. Now, Jono, he's, he, I don't know, you know Jono, he's oh. that guy that's, um, he used to be on TV and I think he does a breakfast show on a rival station, doesn't he? He's happy, isn't he? He's, he's so trivial. And he's a really nice bloke, Jono, but- It's funny, cause he does a breakfast show on Heart, which is, is wrecking his own. There's a bit of irony. Oh, <laughs> I love Carl. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Do you know I, what I mean? Yeah, I love no, you. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's good. But we've met John yeah. a couple of times. We saw him at a couple of, not wishing to say not uh, to show off, but a couple of awards do's. Yeah. And like that's showing off. But like people would have seen dead there. Well, yeah, but yeah. we, <laughs> we went to one where everyone was in like tuxedos oh, or suits yeah. and ties. Not John O. <laughs> Jono was wearing a pair of Bermuda shorts. Big Bermuda and a shorts. Hawaiian knee length Bermuda shirt. shorts with just these little. But I saw him again Tiny another time feet. and he had shorts on at yeah. a similar event. And I've seen him since in the street and he's all. I don't think. I'm wondering if he can wear trousers. I don't think he can actually wear trousers. I don't know if there's a medical reason for that. Whether he's just. His no, legs th are too fat. I think the material is a waste of money. I think it's just yeah. that you can get shorts that big and they're comfortable and, uh. You know, why do you, I mean, to be quite honest, well, well, I don't want to squeeze into a tuxedo anyway. Mm. So, uh, if you can go, I'd love to turn up those things in Bermuda shorts. Well, of course. Flip flops. You but know, do you but think he started off by wearing, maybe he just had the upper half as a tuxedo with the tie and, and then the shorts for And comfort. the shorts underneath and he would just have to come in to kind of sneak behind, you know, a, a sideboard. Potted plant. Or a potted plant. Or his kids, bring his kids ahead of him. Yeah. 
You know, and you are wearing trousers, aren't you? Yeah, 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 of course I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. In yeah, you yeah. go, in you go. Kids move a bit. Well, no. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> exactly. Uh, of course I'm wearing trousers. Why <laughs> would I? I'm wearing trousers. And then you just thought, oh, this isn't fooling yeah. anyone. So uh, now uh, I'm going to make a wacky effort to sort of, you know, The next zone is, I've heard he's going in a grass skirt and a mm. garland around his, and he's yeah. going gonna to come in limboing. But you, you did ask if you could go to the BAFTAs in a dressing game, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> just for ease. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Right, is this talking about diets and stuff, right? Go on. They've come up with a drug that, um, they, they tested it out on a mouse, right? <laughs> they, said, they said, you know, it's a problem that weight, weight is a big issue in the world and, you know, a lot of people are depressed and that, probably like Rick Waller. Well, right? I'm depressed looking at Rick Waller. Well, you know. Oh. I mean, you could, you could sort out Rick by, you know, Jono is an old man, he's got loads of money. He's not old. No, but he's getting on a bit, right? He's about No, but hang on a minute, what I mean is he does his own shopping, right? So, I bet it's Sorry. hard. Sorry, what do you mean? Because he's like, uh, how old is he? Thirty-five. Right? Probably he's got loads mean. of money, he does his own shopping, so when he yeah. goes to the supermarket and he passes, you know, the, the sponge cake section, it must be tough when you've got loads of money to burn that you go, oh, just one more. Yeah. One more. Look, uh, so just, uh, we are getting close to libel here, I think. No, 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 <laughs> but I'm saying how it is, because I've, right. I've tried, like, losing a little bit of weight. Have you? And it is difficult when you, you know, you're in Waitrose and you see a little chocolate muffin and think, well, <laughs> one more and I'll do without- Do you like a little chocolate muffin now and well, again? Yeah, right. Is that your favourite thing? So the a, thing a chocolate is, and let him finish his point. So the thing <laughs> is, right, now with Rick, he lives at home with his mum, so why doesn't his mum just say, I'm gonna buy less this week, and if you eat it all, you're not getting any more? Yeah. <laughs> that, that sort that Does out. he live a short, with his sharp shop? I, I bet he does. I bet he does. <laughs> so he you, does. you don't actually know if this <laughs> is true or not? No, but, but anyway, right? So this, this drug they've come up with. <laughs> It's they've tested uh, this on mics, haven't they? They've tested <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm worried if they haven't tested it on mics. Yeah, thank God for that. Well, it's definitely been tested on mics. Definitely. They, they fed a mouse a <laughs> load of cake. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and it went a little bit chubby and he said, right, stop a minute. <laughs> and then they gave it this drug yeah. that makes you lose weight. Yeah. <gasps> and it, its weight went down, but the only bad so side effect was its eyes were popping out. <laughs> That seems to be fine then. <laughs> let's give it to Jono. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any problem. Oh, let's, let's, uh, uh, yeah, Rick should get some I of that. Yes, yeah, truth, Doc. Look at these. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, Jono, your eyes are popping out. That happened to the mice. <laughs> Sorry? That happened to the mice. Mm, but what, what you do, do you mean? That's the option. But, like what do you mean that's the option? So, so I love the fact that your choice is either being like a fat, happy man who has the odd sponge cake or a stick man with eyes on stalks. I mean, Steve's <laughs> chosen that. All right, calm down. Oh, sorry, I thought we were slagging off Rick Waller sorry, and fat mate. people. Sorry, Let's mate. have a go I... at the fat people before yeah, we start on me, really. Yeah, no, I didn't. I forgot. You know what I mean, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I got some issues, even body issues. You I know, know. But I mean, Rick Waller is grotesque, you know. Yeah, sorry about I'm that. I'm just a little bit weird. I mean, do you know what I mean? Yeah, should we play a song? And well, I'm just of... a little bit offended. Isn't it? That's upsetting. That's upsetting. Vines out of the way on XFM one hundred four point nine. You're listening to the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant. And we've got, oh, we got to try and get on though, because there's time not for enough. That. No, not enough time. Let's, let's let's bang on. Let's do some observations, some, <laughs> some yeah. satirical. Take a sideways look at the week's news. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who's the uh, fattest person you know, Carl? Is um, it an issue for you? Are you are you concerned about fat people? Only if I'm travelling somewhere and there's one sat next to you. That'd yeah, be a bit annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Ricky pointed out a few months ago when I when I went away, we were talking about plane journeys, and you were saying how it's a bit out of order. Uh, when you go on holiday, right, you take your suitcase with you. Mm. Mm. I'm a this is all Was right. Was I saying this on air though? Is this my question? Because there's there's a reason I don't say things. No, no, on no, air no. Sometimes. But I think you've got <laughs> a good point. It made me think. Oh no, it's w I know what it was. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of like if if you're not allowed to carry a handbag, John, because you're a few pounds overweight. But there's a bloke behind you who weighs ten stone more than you. Yeah. Surely the whole package should be weighed. Yeah. Like you and your baggage. Absolutely. Can you, be should have, you should have a carrier bag. And so I can. So I can take on uh, a Labrador and a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah. He can take on um, a towelette. Yeah. Yeah. To wipe absolutely. his brow. Yeah. His sweaty, fatty brow. Yeah. yeah. No, I absolutely, absolutely right. So, yeah. uh, and that does yeah. wind you up, do you, does it? But I don't. That's the only time. I mean, people can't help it. We don't want to like come across as if we're just having a go at people who've got. But they can help it. This is what we're saying. No, but, no, that's, but that's, that's a little bit. But I'm talking about obesity. I'm not talking about people who are overweight or have got a problem with with eating and so on. I'm talking about people who are obese because that read some statistics. I mean, no, I read no, no, some no, statistics. Oh God, if we're getting serious, it, it is a problem, isn't it? Because it, it's an eating disorder. So what what what's what's terrible is is laziness and kidding yourself. But the people who have, have genuinely got a problem. But it's, it's a genuine a concern for apparently or... for the future of our children. Apparently, it genuinely is. Yeah. Apparently, it costs. I was reading some statistic that it costs something like. 
uh, America, it costs them like 119 billion pound dollars a year or something. But that's in, not uh, why people are starving because fat people are eating all the food. I'm not there's saying people left. are starving because of fat people. Oh, you mean? You I'm mean, saying that it's a, no. I'm saying it's a concern. Oh, we meant we soon have kids and they're hungry because next door they all the food. No, I just <laughs> mean that, it, that apparently because exercise now people aren't taking up exercise, kids right. aren't taking up exercise. That we will all be obese in years to come. Not all obese, but yeah. there'll be a, a big obesity. Well, that's the natural state for the mammals. We crave fat. We literally fat, crave fat for for hard times. But now, but now there are no. Well, you're all saying time. offices typing but away. But, but our body haven't evo hasn't evolved yeah. to, to take our social uh, input in. Yeah. So we still act like mammals, mm. and we we eat and we crave it, and we like to store fat. Yeah. That's why we have to go jogging because we don't we don't hunt, we don't do anything. So it it it's not really their fault. You've, it's, it, it, I mean, it is about willpower and, and sort of like you know self. Hate but in years that, to come, we'll have just pictures, like kids will just have pictures of, they won't have NSYNC on the wall, it'd be uh, like sumo wrestlers. Mm. Oh, or, God, um, oh, oh, you know sumo wrestlers, I saw this thing about sumo wrestlers, um, cause the, the, they, they're athletes, they go into the, this thing cause it's a big honour to be a, a sumo, it's actually really? true, right? Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. So, you'd go along and you'd be nine stone, and you, they, they have doctors there, so you have to eat to get big. Right. right. And this doctor was interviewed, so his doctor was going, you know, it, it is against, you'd think it's against the Hippocratic Oath, um, but, um, whereas they do it anyway, I do it healthily, so he sells them, he gives them diets of like, uh, you know, ten pounds of rice, wow. nine pounds of fish and things like that, and they get up, but now, because it's such an honour, it's almost a spiritual thing to be a great sumo and that, um, they have apprentices willing to, now you know like when you're an apprentice, say, um, uh, runner or something, you have to make the coffee and, uh, or when you're working an apprentice in the studio, you have to clean the floor and stuff. Do you know what apprentice sumo's job is? An apprentice sumo? Go on. They wipe mm. the sumo wrestler's ass because they can't reach, they literally can't reach. Rubbish. Uh, right, uh, can, what, we'll give Who's out the Who's taking now. that up as a profession? I know. I imagine that. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be a sumo wrestler, it's a great honour and I'd love to work under you. Sure. Uh, so, uh, sure. So, uh, what will I do? Start press ups first? There'll be some press ups, yeah. Okay, there yeah. Will be well, some press -ups. Get into the gym now and, uh. No, uh, I, I don't before you rush go off. Go on, go on. You I'm will... starving. No, I can understand that. Go do on. You d would you mind wiping my arms? Right. Because I've just. You can't reach? No. Got, no, I can't get the arms back there. Can't okay. get them down there. So, uh, and I'll tell, but, but I'll be honest with you, a lot of this oriental food, it doesn't sit well with me. So it goes straight through me, to be honest. So it's quite messy. It's quite messy down there. It's right. quite runny. Okay. okay. So be careful. Okay. Um, you no, know, wear some gloves. Honor. If you want to wear gloves, wear gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. I don't want to wear gloves. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of This apprenticeship is two years, isn't it? You know, you're not going to take my feces and salad, are you? As souvenirs or something? No, no, no. I will like, be um, mainly getting fat myself. Sure. Wiping your ass. Yeah. Great honour. <laughs> yeah, no, good. Well, Great no, honour. If someone could call in and verify that, look, Carl, look at Carl looking at us like we just said the worst thing oh. ever. You this is true, like, apparently. Makes your eyes pop out and put in Forrest Gump in a wheelie bin. Don't look How at us like that. This is a. We're talking cultural science here yeah, and, yeah. and wiping asses. Yeah. So. Play a record. <laughs> yeah, it's low brow <laughs> and it's high brow at the same time, Carl. <laughs> That's an incredible right? picture. Oh, yeah, hey, this is for all you people who, who, uh, who like the odd cake. This is Bowie and Sweet Thing. Do you like that? Nice. Sweet go. Thing. David Bowie. Beautiful. Amazing, off Diamond Dogs. Absolutely. We went to see him in the week, didn't we? We did indeed, yeah. This it's little very exclusive gig that Jonathan awesome. was there people. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, lovely to see him. Yeah, lovely to see him again. <laughs> lovely to see, uh, see Dave um, again. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's looking good. He looks great, doesn't he? He was, yeah. Was he bisexual? <laughs> sorry, I don't what, know why I'm Sorry, at the, at the gig? No, 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 it's just a fact, because I know he's married now, isn't he, with a kid and stuff. Yeah. But there was some, there was some sort of- Oh, I, I think, um, possibly, I don't know, I wouldn't wanna- These pop stars, they dabble with anything, don't they, I suppose? <laughs> <laughs> Try anything once, don't they? These rock and roll stars. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, uh, if anyone knows the, uh, the, the truth behind Yeah, well, how does sumo begin? I d Cause that's why I can't, I've never understood how it began as a, as a, as a sport, because it's- do you know what I mean? Cause you are, they are so huge. Well so I reckon, it's not I, I reckon it was a fat bloke who was picking on a little skinny bloke and the skinny bloke <laughs> right. knew Kung Fu and Jitsu. He goes, right, let's fight. And the fat bloke was no punching. Yeah. Went, what yeah. do you mean? He went, it's just leaning against each other. Yeah. And they went, yeah. well you're bound to win. <laughs> yeah. And he went, right, I've won. He went, yeah. bloke, okay. Yeah. And that's how it started. And the, yeah. the fat bloke He grabbed went, him. Are you, are you wearing a nappy? Well, I'm pretty I'm, big, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm having white. problems now. I can't I, wipe my I eyes. can't wear a tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. I just can't. <laughs> exactly. I just, you know, that's the next yeah. step for, John has been banned wearing a thong in public, <laughs> so. But seriously, if anyone knows how sumo began, I'm genuinely interested, email maybe, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, uh, just, cause I, I, you know, Carl, what are your thoughts? Where do you think, uh, where do you think it began? Cause it's an, don't you think it's an odd sport? I mean, it is a weird. I've always got nice hair. 
They seem to care about the hair a bit. Oh, sure. So he's sort of nicely pinned back. Yeah. Are you yeah. ever asked to, when, when people are doing like, you know, uh, um, Sharma's Britain or, you know, people are doing like big <laughs> historical <laughs> they, they, they say, well, well, we'll ask Carl about this. He might, yeah. he might have an opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got I'd nice like to hair. see you as a pundit. Definitely uh, on those kind of, on news night. It's yeah. just that it, I think it's a funny one because the whole idea of sport is to keep fit. Yeah. Mm. And that sort of. You know, it's a yeah. bit of an odd one, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Well, it's, it's the same as sort of like weightlifting. You have to go through all that all year to see if you can push up, mm. you know, something heavier than someone else. But you have to walk round in a golf buggy to, yeah. to you know, to that one. Yeah, yeah. And take steroids and. Well, I mean, look, I mean, the other day, you know, I, I don't do much sport. I think living in London, there's not that many areas you can go and. Actually, I'm probably wrong there. Well, there's all the gyms and yeah, sports clubs I'm, and stuff. I'm probably yeah, wrong and the on parks and, and the roads. But, but yeah. look how like excited I was going round to your place, Ricky. And yeah. you had a, like a little garden. Yeah. I haven't got a garden. We played football, was, didn't we? And we had a little. Well, I did. No, you were rubbish. I beat you in penalties, um, five two, and then I beat you on uh, uh, knockout. I think ten no, no, four. No. And he always makes an excuse. He goes, "No, start again. We didn't say that." He, or I'm cracking up. So, you, have you seen Ricky play football? No, I've not really seen either. Right, play uh, it's not football. It, you sort of do it like um, <laughs> it's like when you get a cat and you chuck it some wool. You sort of jump on it <laughs> and lie on top of it so you can't get it, and then sort of kick it with his feet lying <laughs> on the floor. Really? No, what I mean is, he fouled me, and I still, I was on one Are you sure he didn't just collapse? Yeah, because <laughs> all the stress and the exercise. That's the other thing, that's he the other thing. He just tumbled off the floor <laughs> and <laughs> still and poured out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was too strong for him. No, yeah. no. I was too strong for you. Yeah, but you didn't last long, did you? It was like, if, if football I matches- I didn't want to last long. Matches they just, they just bring me on for the first ten minutes. <laughs> Who suggested that you two play football? Did you suggest this, Rick? Yeah, we went around there, yeah, I thought, yeah. We had to go and football in the garden, yeah. Yeah. What else do we do? Uh, I, I look, just had a look at your salamander. <laughs> right, is that you from Israel? Because <laughs> Cause I know that when I first went into your house, you did, you used to show your genitals to people a lot more than you do now. Oh, you uh, definitely used to do that, you used to think that was hilarious. Yeah. I don't know what it is that you get to a certain age, men of a certain ilk yeah, get to well, a certain Jonathan age and just start, yeah. Out, didn't he? yeah. Yeah, when Ross came in he did the same. Yeah. It's that weird. Yeah, I suppose. I thought. Oh, you've seen it now. I thought you've seen it. You know, yeah. you weren't. You weren't impressed the first time <laughs> I to beat Grot on his team. So, uh, yeah. 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 Um, well, it's, you know, it's but, like, you always know, nice. Always, always a treat. To see yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you but, make of Ricky's place? What do you, what do you make of it? Again, that's not a euphemism. It <laughs> yeah. doesn't mean that I've got it's like a flat fish. <laughs> yeah. He's, what do, you, he's, <laughs> do you want to see my place? <laughs> yeah. There it is. It's, it's all right. I mean, I've, I've. You've seen better. I've, the pictures you've got on the wall of, of, uh, I'm not. Not keen on the same sort of art as you are. Right. What well, sort of art? Because um, yours is quite sort of modern art. Uh, He's got this big, like, bit of uh, abstract canvas with like just just loads of dark colours on it. Yeah. It looks really miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It, it sort of brings the place down. <laughs> If, if you're gonna sell it, that woman on Channel Five, the house doctor, if she came around, she'd say, "Take that down. <laughs> and I'll get double for it." <laughs> it's just. Oh. It's, it's, it, I oh. thought it was um, like a. A wall he was Take testing. that down, get that salamander out, and just pop those back in your trousers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he didn't know what sort of colour to use on the wall, so he's he's like been putting a little bit on. No, that's not good. I'll use like a bit of a darker colour. Yeah, and it's just loads are of you, different. Are you Brian Sewell? Because you're <laughs> just saying. So, what some... kind of art do you like? I'm intrigued. Yeah, I, I like uh, Athena. I like Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> Lowry, the worst painter in the world. The most no, overrated. No, no, no. You see, it depends. You're you're getting excited about Rubbish. your your stuff you've got on. Lowry, right? Yeah. You can look at. He his really is the Brian and Michael. No. Of the, well, then. but it's real, isn't it? Right? What do you mean it's real? It's real. You look at his picture and you <gasps> see like little disabled people walking about. You see kids That's playing, not real, then. playing with like footballs. You've got your your, your dad coming home from work, working in the factory. Got yeah. a little dog barking. It's it's life, <laughs> right? And you can look at it for like ten minutes. <laughs> go away. Go and watch telly or something for a bit. Yeah. Go back to it, and you'll see different things in it. Well, yeah. Really? Why? What is it like one of those magic sure, eyes? You sure that's not a telly? Yeah, you've you been sure looking it? out the window, Carl. You sure you weren't watching when the boat comes in? People <laughs> will agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than your stuff that you buy. <laughs> this show started off slick. Yeah. We had something to say. No, I, we, um, we, what are you we, talking we, about? We're now discussing we art. Were, we were taking the big out of, of, of fat people, and mm. now. It's and now you've taken it all highbrow, Carl. Play a record, we'll come back to fatties. Badly drawn boy. 
something to talk about on XFM 104.9. You're listening to Ricky Gervais. Well, then, there's Steve Mitchell. Well, well, let's just get on with a. And we've already had a complaint. Yeah. Someone yeah. saying, your <laughs> TV show's so good, why is your radio show so hard work, you useless fat? Yeah. So uh, yeah. you can't you can't please everyone, Carl. It's like Lowry. Some people like Lowry. Some people like that fella who did the dark painting for me. Talking of uh, emails, there was a, some guy. I don't. He doesn't mention Lowry's his name, rubbish. or maybe his name's Steve. But he said that he was checking out the uh, the Office DVDs. DVDs going on sale, isn't it? Soon, I think the video <laughs> and the DVD of the Office are going on sale soon. <laughs> but he was checking out on Amazon, and he said that uh, <laughs> it says on there, and I did check it, double check it, that uh, it includes uh, some special some special frottage. On the, or special frottage. Oh, is that frottage. How it's correctly that's pronounced. Is that mutual doing it to each I other? I think it's, or, it's is a is sexual. It the, or is it the rubbing up against each other? Yeah. It's one of those. It's isn't yeah, it's is that what it is. It's where you rub up against I people. I don't know. It's something like that. Yeah. But, so there's some special frottage on there. Yeah. <laughs> <Look forward to laughs> I, think the they mean, I think they mean footage. I'm imagining I'm, so. If you're buying it for frottage, you are going <laughs> to yeah, be you're disappointed. Sorely disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, <laughs> We're gonna- th that first hour then was about eating too much, wasn't it? And I think we can- That's essentially that, what we talked about, yeah. That is probably about. Do you, you know, um, I, I read something interesting. You know, they've banned- I used to get the Guinness Book of Records every year from about the age of ten onwards. And, uh, <laughs> it, I went straight, went to the section, like, you know, the biggest, fattest, all that, right? And there used to be gluttony records. And it was like these ridiculous looking Texans. And uh, how many hamburgers they can eat. And of course they were- it's just so dangerous. They've they've put it down to how many hamburgers you can be eat in a minute now. Yeah, and so they've brought it down to things like seventeen. Yeah, you know, they still yeah. burst their stomach glass ball. But um, uh, I, I remember I was um I was watching the Big Brother when they had to break that record. You know, like eating sweet corn and balancing. I was thinking, who wants to beat that record? Yeah, the, most of the records in the Guinness Book exist because no one wants to contest them. There's one in there. Um, a, a bloke there, had his picture taken with a milk bottle on his head, and <laughs> it's the record for having a milk bottle on his head. Yeah, and it's like four days. I want to go. <laughs> no one wants to beat that record. Mm. And there was one in there. This is amazing. This is absolutely true, right? Like last year's Guinness Book Records, it says, um, uh, in in Thailand in 1980. A, uh, uh, some sort of, um, uh, temple or ceremony, these, uh, incense burners fell over and I think crushed people or burned people to death, seven people died, and it's under the heading, Worst Jostic Disaster Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon oh. they're gonna try and beat that one? Oh, God. There's a, there's a guy up north, right, who's, um, <laughs> he's in the Guinness Book of Records <laughs> for being able to put a, you know, a car, a little mini. Up his no, arse? No, on his head, right, and you think, oh, that's good. But without the engine in. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he puts this thing that still weigh, weighs like, you know, 50 stones on his head and you're going boo. Yeah. What do you mean he puts the mini on his head? He, um, he wears a little cap with a little bit of sponge on. <laughs> <laughs> they all do up there. And they've, uh, and he picks up this mini. Cause, yeah, go on. And he takes like two blokes to put it on his head and then he walks around for about 10 seconds showing off. But he doesn't have the engine in it. So, I mean, if you're gonna do it. Yeah. Go the whole hog is yeah. what I'm saying. See, what I think- the reason I think he didn't do it with the engine in is because he couldn't, Carl. Well, yeah. we'll pick- do a motorbike or something. My mate went to see that- what's that circus that came to London? And that was in, uh, the Camden, and it's all like really weird sort of gothic things. Oh, right, yes, I remember. And, uh, there's a, uh, 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 he said at one point this nude woman got into a, a jar. He went, but it was a big jar. Yeah, he yeah. said it was a jar big enough for a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people want to go, boo! <laughs> yeah. But, you know, get into a jam jar. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I'll be applauded. But <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. a big jar. That's a jar shaped like I, you. I will get into a wardrobe. <laughs> what, that big ward? Yeah, well, I can get into that. No, you, I will get into the well, wardrobe. I remember I told you about this before, Rick. I was devastated a couple of years. I think it was a couple of years ago when I read about that guy that won the world record for staying underground the longest. Like, oh, what yeah. happened, right? He he got in this box and uh, he was buried like ten feet underground. It was in a pub car park in Manchester. Yeah, and the only way and he could Nottingham. communicate, the only way he could communicate, was through this tube that they had that went up to the surface, and he could talk to people. And I assume that was how he got oxygen. And um, and it said that while he was down there. Right, he began and ended a relationship with yeah. a woman. She, right? she a was a passerby. She chatted to him. Da, da, da. They started this relationship and they ended it. Right now, my point was right. Obviously, you know, my luck with the ladies is not not triumphant. And you know, I haven't got a girlfriend or whatever. You and don't when, one. Well, yeah, exactly. Right. And what I'm saying is, when you read that there is a man ten feet underground pulling women through a tube, yeah. You've got to sit yourself down and ask yourself some very serious questions. Yeah. 
I yeah. was a little bit, as you can imagine, a little bit upset. From the Midlands? Exactly. Yeah. A little bit devastated. Oh dear. Really upset me. Do, do you still- what is your method now of ch- do you still throw little rocks at them and go, over here? <laughs> yeah, I, um, there was a kid I remember at our school, Mark Johnson, when we were like ten or something, and we were talking about Guinness Book of Records, and Mark Johnson went, yeah, I'm in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I'm intrigued, you're a ten year old. <laughs> I said, go on. He went, no, I don't, does this qualify? Does this qualify? He claimed that he was in America once and he went to see, um, a baseball game and the, supposedly that game was the world record for the number of people in an audience for a baseball game. It was like some massive stadium I, I, I and this was the I, most people ever, I'll tell you what account, I and he claims it, he was there. I don't reckon it was listed. Well. I don't reckon Mark Johnson got his name <laughs> no, on that exactly. list. Uh, exactly. And Ross McWhirt would be going, well that's the whole book. But I think I remember him looking it up and going, there it is, I was there. Yeah. Yeah, Does no. that count? I mean, no, I don't. I've done a similar thing. There was an ice hockey game in Manchester. Sure. And they filled it. It was the, uh, the arena. Yeah. They had an ice hockey game. Uh, and I was part of it, but I wouldn't go around bragging. No. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, now you've no. brought it up, I'm telling you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not gonna boast about it. Nah. You're what's not gonna the, get a t-shirt made. What's the best thing you've ever done? I don't what? know. I just... Come on. What's the best thing you've ever done that we will go, did you really do that, Carl? You see, it's weird, cos I've been thinking about this quite a bit. Cos, uh, I'm 30 on Monday. Are you? Are you really? Yeah. Oh, you're just gonna try and get presents, aren't you, from the listener? No. Nah. But- I but, say listener. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but, um, I kind of was thinking, have I had a good thirty years? <laughs> what do you I, think? I don't know. Carl, is this gonna get a bit melancholy now? Yeah. Cause we've been having a few laughs at the expense of fat people. I'm not sure you wanna- we want you to bring it down now. No. We, we, just, we, we, we've been having a jolly laugh about people who are morbidly obese. It's yeah. always when my girlfriend's working away, I always think about odd things. Do you? Odd times. Doesn't she leave you shiny things or videos in so you don't get- you don't get too depressed and you can- Well, what, well, la last night when I sent you that text. That was- Right! Um, right, let's play a record. This sounds right. intriguing because I'm right, worried it is Carl's intriguing. Bit... It's incredible. Right, play a record. Right, w <laughs> wait for this text that Carl sent me. Oh, uh, All Along the Watchtower there by Jimi Hendrix. Beautiful. Can right. I just say straight away, Rick, before you carry on, um, we've had some people emailing in, um, about the origins of sumo wrestling. Yeah. But they've sort of cut and pasted a huge ream of information from the web. Thanks very much, but- we need bullet points, or not, not, don't bother. You're wasting our time, frankly, with any kind, any, too uh, many sentences, uh, proper grammar. We're talking about Ricky Gervais here. Yeah. So not just, that I'd read the bullet points either, you'd read them too. Exactly, me. but exactly, so but your, your concentration would lapse so quickly, <laughs> that it just yeah. needs to be key words, you know, arse, sumo, <laughs> yeah, yeah. things like that. Yes, arse wipe. <laughs> yes, I arse need, wipe, sumo, correct. Yeah, or maybe uh, even a picture of someone wiping an arse with a tip <laughs> next exactly. to it. If you could get yeah. words if you out. Could, if you could, maybe if you could send through the Origins of sumo wrestling in sort of diagram or <laughs> sketch form, yeah, or in a yeah. kind of comic book, or one of those flick books. <laughs> that just, you just maybe draw a quick flick book. Send that in. <laughs> but thank you very much. Well, thanks for thinking of us. Um, I woke up this morning. Yeah, feeling fine. It's not a blues song, and uh, I turned my phone on, and it, it was from Carl, and it went, "Forget it. I've made my mind up." And I thought, "Wow, what is that?" And I forget it. it, I've made my yeah, mind. Yeah, I went, Carl, what is it? He went, oh no, it's about the text I sent you last night. I went, well, what, what was it? I just got this text. He went, ah, uh, oh, I was just wondering, I was, I was thinking last night. He said, supposing you had to have your hands removed. Sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 and the doctor said, well, you can either have them stay like that with stumps, or I can sew feet there. <laughs> what would you have? <laughs> and I was bleary eyed and I went, the stumps? He went, yep. Yeah. I went, all right? He went, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then and what was his follow up text to that? And then I got the text, it was obviously before it, and it went, and it was like quite serious. What, what would you do? So he's not doing your hands, would you have stumps or the feet? Right? Now the way, uh, when I said, he's made his mind up, and I went, the stumps, he went, yep. Yeah. I think secretly he decided on the feet, <laughs> but was too embarrassed to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little, little bit of what would you do? Because it's it. But why night, did you think of this? Why did you think of this? Girlfriend's away, right? Yeah, no, that's not why you start thinking bizarre I'll, surgery I'll tell you devices. Now, right? I'll let you into my little mind, right? Last night, I um, <laughs> I had some beans on toast, right? 
because she was away. <laughs> it's good already. Right. She was away, she had some beans on toast, right. she went yeah. wild. Yeah. Right? Now, I was stood up, I live on like a, on a high street, right? So I'm, I'm washing up, I'm looking out the window. First thing that had me attention is, I can, I can look into other people's flats, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was weird how all these different lives were going on, I was watching them, and everybody had the telly on and was watching Volcano, right? Which was on last night. Right. right. And I thought, oh, that, that's weird, right? I can see them all watching it. And it was like a little Chinese lad who was dancing around in some underpants. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a little old woman who lives downstairs <laughs> who was reading a book, and she's always reading a book every night, and it's like, I have a better life than her. And then there's a, <laughs> there's like some sort of bouncer who's always getting ready to go out late at night yeah. with all the black on. He looks like a bouncer. So I was watching all this life yeah. going on, I thought. Did you witness a murder while you were doing <laughs> it? <this? laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like that sort of sliver film where that bloke had loads of tellies watching yeah, people's sure. lives. So that was going on in my mind. And then I was washing up and I picked up the plate and I thought, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? The, the human body, the way you can just sort of, you know, I want to pick that up and you do. Yes. And the way your hands work, right? Yeah, You've yeah. got five little digits, but it's, it's <laughs> just the right amount to do what, <laughs> yeah. to do what you've got to do, right? <laughs> so... So I'm, I'm washing, I'm cleaning the plate. <laughs> Sorry, Carl! Stop! It's just the right amount. Might be one of the most genius things I've ever heard said. I would love David Attenborough to phone you up and say, Carl, how do I word this about the evolution of the mammalian front, uh, limb? Just go, we'll just say it's the right amount. Huh? But it is. It one, is. One of extra would is. get in the way. Yeah. And one less would just make it a little bit more tricky when picking up a, a bit of a slippery dish. Sure, or, <laughs> buy, or buying gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a slippery dish. So then, I, I was thinking, oh. uh, imagine like going to the doctors and they're saying, yeah, everything's all right, your heart's good and everything, but... <laughs> your heart's good? What, your Larry's or...? Yeah, yeah. your heart, your heart, yeah. you're, you're in good form and what sure. have you. It's good news, you know, I had Giano in earlier, he's not looking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I had Waller. But yeah. you're, you're all right, but your hands need to come off. <laughs> right. <laughs> Blimey. But, That's bad, like, I get a second opinion initially. <laughs> But a bit of good news, I've got a nice pair of feet I can sure. sort you out with. Yeah. And he puts them on, and then I was thinking, right, first of all, <laughs> washing up, what would that be like? <laughs> but... Steve! <laughs> I, I, that'd be tricky. Really, yeah. And then the second thing was, it'd probably ruin the, the, sort of the shape of your jumper. Because <laughs> you had to keep putting the feet through there. Yeah. And then I thought, but I could still <laughs> cycle in. Okay. To work. You could run in. Well, that's the thing. You'd was, be like, you'd be really yeah. fast. Well, well, that's what I was thinking. I thought I could still cycle because I could balance. And then I thought, but the only thing is, I probably couldn't pull the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Because of the little short things. Yeah, yeah. And then, like you, I thought, but then again, you'd run in in half the time. So that's what was going on in last night. Right. That's what I was thinking about. Did sure. you? Did you? How ever... long did this take? <laughs> Well, how long does it take to wash up? Right. Because I imagine you just being there for, like, all night. <laughs> Probably 25 minutes. How long did the little Chinese fella dance for in his pants? He's always doing it. Last night he was at it for, like, 10 minutes. Just, yeah. And his girlfriend never sits in the same room as him. She's always <laughs> sat in the bedroom. She's going, you, you dance in pants again, I go in next yeah. door. Well, she was in the bedroom. She's always in the bedroom, sat on the floor, on the mobile phone. Right. All really? the time, yeah, it's weird how people's lives are just like, it is like that Groundhog Day thing, it's like, you know, he's jumping about in his underpants, the old woman's sat there reading a book. Yeah. And that's what got me thinking about my life. Do you think she ever goes- Are you sure she's not dead? <laughs> 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 Every time you look down there, she's just flicking through it, she's just reading this book. The pages never turn. <laughs> she never seems to finish it. Oh, she never moves you, from her chair. Are you sure, are you sure the Chinese her girl's going- Her cats are dead around I, her. I, I, I'm going into next door again, that little yeah. round headed fella's smell. looking in. He's looking in at me, the bouncer goes, don't worry love, I'll go and beat that's, him up. But he's true. always getting ready. That's true, they're they see, they see you staring at and washing up going, I could have feet here. And they get yeah. scared, the old woman's dead! <laughs> oh Carl, dear. can you tell us roughly which neighbourhood you live in, so- so it's, that we know. It's central. Central, is it? Yeah. yeah. Wow, imagine if that little- d was he a Chinese fellow, did you say? Yeah. Imagine <laughs> if he was listening now, I'd love him to call in and explain these actions. Well, he, he might be on some other radio station talking about a lad who's always washing up and <laughs> yeah. looking at his hands in a mysterious way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> But, do we have this doctor, this doctor that would go, well alright Carl, I've got- you can either leave him as stumps, or I've got every little pair of feet. Why- uh, I mean, I t told Jane this and Jane went, did, is that the only choice? Is he, you could say, could I have some dead man's hands? <laughs> have you got any, have, if you, where'd you get the feet from? Where'd you get the feet from? Can I have, can I have, what would you rather have then? Human feet or monkey paws? 
Pff, well, I mean, that wasn't an option last night. That if the doctors no. said- No, it wasn't an option last night, but don't forget, it's in your head, Carl. <laughs> this didn't happen. No, this but is... I'm just saying, at the time, that's all the doctor had to offer. But you know, it's your head, you can go anywhere. No, 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 it wasn't a real doctor to offer. It's in your head, you can go anywhere. Y you're not trapped. Yeah, but if you can do anything, then you'd say we'll sort us out some other hands. <laughs> Fair point, the clear so, record. So. <laughs> 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 we gotta come back to this. Strokes, someday, XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Lads, can I just stop you there straight right, away? Because the record finished before we'd finished chatting about what we're gonna do well, next. We're gonna do, we're gonna do Carl's stupid competition again. We're just trying to get the- I think- I think that- you, What you are the rules? Just, right, I Because last that, week it was a shambles, Rick. I know, it was too easy, that's no, why. The week before, I should no, say. No, I think- I think people should phone up now and be held in the queue, and then he should have the clue. Otherwise, because people are just phone up whether when they know the answer or not. But how is that entertaining to the listener? It's <laughs> not, That's what I'm gonna I throw think, back at you straight away. I don't think this is entertaining at all. I just think people might want to talk to Carl for us just right. a split second. The way we'll do it, right? Yeah. Right? This is me role here, right? This is- this is the way we're gonna do it. Right. right. We're gonna say, if you want to win the office on VHS, right? Yeah. You can call don't it now. Don't say it like that. Like yeah, it's a rubbish it like, prize. There is some- if you get the DVD, there's some special frottage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> it's impressive. Right, so they call up now on 08, 08, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Yeah. We like bung on a bit of Elton John in a bit, right? Mm. We line up two callers- Look forward to that, it's a beautiful track. Yeah, we line up two callers, Yeah. right? And then we have them on the air and we say, right, I'm gonna tell you the little story, you've gotta tell me what song it is. And they're playing against each other. Well, right. can they be? Could they be up at the same time then, so I can speak yeah, at the same yeah, time? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But how can they play against each other? Because they haven't got buzzers. It's or the first one. They'll, they can say the name. They can shout out the name. And and it's organised. And they got as many goes as they want. No, I think no, they no, should no. have one go at a time, and then the other person can have a go, and then they can have another go. Yeah. It's like dueling. It's and, like dueling. And if they don't win, no one wins this week. We're not giving away prizes willy nilly. Sure. You know, <laughs> we can give one away next week again. Because you know, like Maybe the office is not costing us anything. Because we were like involved. I know, we can get as I, many I, copies I, as you want of that. I like <laughs> Seriously. it. I like it when like we got them coming out of our. Uh, do, 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 do you think the listeners are usually in on sort of board meetings like this? <laughs> or do you? you know, I usually... said this before, guys. I said before <laughs> I we know. should do this off air, but you, you <laughs> refused imagine, to try. Imagine Chris Talent going. Hold on. What they they can they can what do they, they do? can phone they, a friend. They, they can, yeah, they just phone a friend. Look, come down. To, right, okay. Look, we haven't got this. We've got this sorted. Phone up now. Phone up. We'll have to. We'll play some adverts. Phone up now. Yeah. Right, so so that's the plan then. Okay, right. we're gonna have a beautiful track here. Continuing our wait, whoa, 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 Steve, 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 Steve. Go on. Right, I've said your name five times now. I don't need to mention you at all next week. Right, um, we're gonna play uh, Out and John. Continuing our sort of thing of don't don't diss them just because they're old and bald now. Yeah, they used to be good. This is a beautiful track. I dissed him, didn't I? Yeah. Um, called Tiny Dance. So we gonna enjoy that. Yeah. Enjoy that. Enjoy listener. that. And then, if, if not the now, show. Steve, what were you going to say? <laughs> Thanks for asking. I was just going to say, <laughs> what should the audience be doing now? If they're listening at home, they want to play the game. What should they be doing, Carl? Should they be phoning say you the now? Say the phone number they, again. They should be ringing 08700 800 1234. 08700 800 1234. And two lucky contestants get to play um, your game. Yeah, what's the song? What's the song that Carl's thinking? Could I give it? you a clue when you call up? You've got more chance of playing if you don't sound like a mentalist. <laughs> exactly. Most of the people that phone sound a bit like Carl. We're not interested. We don't want those <laughs> no. sort of people. Yeah. We want people who can, you know, who are maybe eloquent. Why are you watch me in my pants? <laughs> <laughs> Out and John, Tiny Dancer. What Beautiful. a great track. Oh, that's that magnificent. Is. Well, we've got. <laughs> do, uh, well. Despite Carl's actions, you should have seen Carl. It was like squiddly diddly. <laughs> His arms and legs there, he'd have been better with feet. I'll tell you. He didn't know what he was doing. We were getting angry. At one point, he went, oh, we get a man and a woman. And the, uh, <laughs> bloke phones up. He goes, are you a bloke? The bloke goes, yeah. He goes, hold on. And then, another bloke goes, he goes, oh, you're a bloke. Oh, we wanted a woman. <laughs> Look, so got, oh, he, goes, he goes, put the woman on. She came on, he went, are you the woman? <laughs> it's the way he speaks oh, to people. So, have we got on the line? Here's the woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's the woman. Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, what's your name? Sarah. Sarah, okay. Right, Steve, you, you, you want to be rooting for this? Well, I think we should, uh, it seems to me because you may need some help because obviously Carl's mind is, uh, is a, a viper's nest. Yeah. It's a jungle in there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you want to call anyone at any point, maybe you've got some questions you want to just consult or con confer, then I'll be I on your side. To. You're then like, you're, it's just like, you're like her phone a friend. Exactly, I'm the phone a friend. I'm and the, uh, ask the audience. Who's and the bloke? Who's the bloke? It's Owen. 
Owen, okay, I'll, I'll be, um, helping you out should you need any help or clues as, you know, as insight into Carl's mind. I must tell you, though, we don't know what Carl's gonna come up with now, either. No. We I keep it, we keep it real like this. I should just say, for people who've not heard the show before, um, this is where Carl now will tell us a cryptic story and basically, hidden within that will be a clue to the title of a song. I say cryptic, it's- it's- Gobbledygook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nonsense. So, okay then, um, just to find out, um, uh, who- who goes first, my lad or- or your girl, um, I'm gonna, um, uh, th uh, toss a coin in my head. Okay. So, who, who can guess Well, first? ladies first, ladies first. Okay, what was your so name again, sorry? Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, Sarah. So, okay, so- Sarah, uh, heads or tails? Heads or tails. Tails. No. Right, my lad will go first. Okay, okay so, right. so what this means is, when he's finished the, uh, the cryptic clue, you, Owen, will get to guess first, but if you get it wrong, it goes over to Sarah, and then back and forth until one, hopefully one of you gets it right. Okay. okay. Uh, we could be here for some time. Yeah. Right. And what, what, what are we playing for here? A DVD or video of The Office? Whatever we can whatever find. Whatever you've got, whatever format you've got. Yeah. Okay yeah. then. Brilliant. Okay, Carl, go. Right, so here we go. So then, it's right. the name of a song we're looking for. Brilliant. Right, this bloke, is had a, uh, He's had a good night out at the yeah. pub. Right. This is probably all irrelevant. Mm -hmm. um, Remember that, Owen. This <laughs> could all be irrelevant. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. So he's had a good night out with his mates and that, and uh, he's really enjoyed himself. And he's on his on his way home, and it's just like any any ordinary night, right? Everything's just normal. He's seen the same people leaving leaving the pub, going home, and he's like, "See you, you know, see you tomorrow night. I'll, I'll be out tomorrow, seven thirty and what have you." <coughs> and and they're on the way home, and uh, it's a nice night. Everything's everything's nice, and he's walking home, and he sees this sort of sort of smoke coming out of a grid, right? Some smoke coming out of a grid. Yeah, a bit a bit of like smoke. And he thinks, what's that? Right? And this is what's weird because it's like any other normal night, but this time the smoke coming out of the grid, and he goes over to it, and he can hear some moaning. Right? It's like ooh, so he he thinks this isn't right, so he stands over the grid. And he's and he's looking down and he can't see anything, so he lifts the grid up, right? Do you mean a grill? No, a grid. A you grid. You know, like a grid in the street. What? Yeah, he Not means really. a grill. A grill. Okay. 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 And he lifts it off <laughs> and he's looking in and like more smoke's coming out, and he can hear the moaning getting louder, and then this little demon pops his head out. Oh. Right. Bloody and, demons. And he goes, "Are you all right?" Yeah. And the little demon goes, "Oh, I'm hurting." And he goes, what do you mean you're hurting? He said, oh, it's dead hot down there, you know. <laughs> and, and it's weird, because he works it out that it's, like, come from hell, right? Yes. And it, he's going, oh, I'm all hot and burning, all his skin sort of really red raw because of all the flames in hell and stuff. <sighs> so he goes, oh. He said, uh, I tell you what, I I'll take you to the doctors. And the, and the little demon's like, what, y you'll do that for me? And he goes, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And he takes him to the doctors. What's the song? That was, uh, Ricky Gervais on XFM. It's three o'clock now. We're going over to <laughs> Natasha. Thanks very much. See you next week. Bye. Man, a long, right. that, was, that was quite a long story. Ooh. Is Owen and Sarah still there? Yeah. Have you dozed off? <laughs> You're still with us? Okay, Owen. Any clues? No, uh, not yet. I, I, I haven't got guess. a clue. I haven't got a clue. I've, I, I have <laughs> no idea. Can I think out loud with Owen, do you think? No, I think him? Owen needs to at least okay. have a guess before Go on, have a guess, think. Owen. Uh, smoke on the water. No. Well, it's not, is it? So, okay. Over Sarah, time. what do you think? <laughs> Back out of hell. Mm. It's a good guess. <laughs> no, not. It's not right. Not right. <laughs> right, Carl, you'd have to give him a little clue. Um, well, think about the little fella. Think about the little demon. Yeah. Okay. There's the clue. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Where did I say he came from? Highway to hell. Mm, on the right, along the right lines, but not the right song. Back Sarah. to Sarah. <laughs> Stay away to heaven. Oh. <laughs> Carl, if this is rubbish, I'm never working with you again. <laughs> if this doesn't work, what do you mean? If this is right. rubbish? <laughs> <laughs> right, th right. Okay, take it. Take the main bit of the story. What's happening? We don't know what What's the main, the main bit is? of the story. It took thirty minutes. The grid. There's the grid, we got the grid, grid the yeah. smoke. What's it's he done? How did the story end? He went to the doctor. He went to the doctor. He went to the doctor. Who did he take to the doctor? He went to the little demon, demon fella. Why did he do that? Be Sarah, news, come on, that's a big clue. Right, why did- Sarah, come on, let's think about this. Why would he take a little burnt demon to- Was he burnt? He well, was burnt, wasn't he? He was- he's from hell. Yeah, all the flames yeah. and that, and all his skin hell. was really raw, and he's like- he was moaning in pain. 
And oh. the little fella goes, yeah, I am on the way home. My tea's gonna be in the oven and everything, but do you know what? I'm gonna take you to the doctors and sort you out. Sick. Doctors. <laughs> doctors. Oh, God. Is there man. anyone you've got there in the house who could maybe help you? <laughs> like a sort of eight-year-old child? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. An alien. Yeah. Um. I've got a three-month-old baby. Oh. He probably talks more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Not than you. <laughs> than Carl, we mean. Um. Oh. Right. Right, I'll tell you what, let's play a record. But these let's all have a chat. These poor people have got lives. Sure. They're, they've oh, got yeah, like we haven't. No, but I know, the Carl, this I is- I got- there's so many things I could be doing instead of this, Rick. I know, but Carl- Carl- We'll play some ads, right? They can't back. stay on the line They've got three minutes- they're, they're playing for a video, eh? <laughs> three, they've got three minutes to think about it. Is that alright with you? Okay. Yeah, and is that alright, Owen? Yep. Sorted. <laughs> right. Please try and guess this, because Carl's threatening to roll it over to next week. Oh? I know. I, d I don't want to live a week trying to think of a little burnt devil in a in a grid, as he calls it. <laughs> burnt right. devil in a grid. <laughs> devil, in a, devil in a grid. Devil in by a grid. Excess. Smoky, smoky devil, devil. <laughs> oh God. Oh, um, burnt devil grid. Sarah, any grid? What's a grid? Any it means idea? a grill. It grill. means the little thing in the in the uh, smoke. Burn. Smoke on the water. Bar smoke. Barbecue to doctor. Burnt. Doctor. Owen, doctor. any any ideas? Uh, devil without a cause by Kid Rock. No. What we're gonna oh, do? Is, is, is the word devil right? Yeah. So devil's a, a key word here. And you're thinking about what the bloke's. What's the bloke done? He's took him to devil, the doctor. Why, why, why did he do that? Why didn't he just say, oh yeah, it looks terrible, but I've got to get off home? He's, he's a good a, Samaritan. He's a good Samaritan. Right. He's, he's a good guy. He's a. Uh, he's a good guy. Saviour. Devil. Saviour. Devil for later. <laughs> we're really running out I've of time. I've got it. I've got it. Have you really? Sarah. Yeah. I tell you this, love, you are. You have got something to entertain yourself with in about three weeks' time when we get the, the DVDs and videos through. Cool. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Sympathy for the Devil. Well done! <laughs> sympathy for the Devil. <laughs> Carl, oh, it's man rubbish, alive. Man. It's, it's not rubbish. That's not a cryptic clue. <laughs> it's not rubbish. Sympathy for the Devil. You said he wasn't the devil, you said he was a demon. Right. Yeah, but I One. No. Right. Okay. Sympathy for. What, what's all that rubbish about him being burnt and taken to the hospital? Sorry, Rick, but I'm noting a little, uh, a little whiff yeah. of jealousy there. It's so rubbish. No, so I'm sorry, but Sarah cannot, is happy. It's not allowed to try and make people her guess. Her baby is happy. Sarah. Her, her husband, or maybe partner, sorry, maybe they're Owen. not married, maybe they're living in sin. She, he's also happy. Yeah. They're happy. That household is happy. Owen's Owen, going. devastated. Yeah. yeah. Owen. Do you, what, do you want it on DVD or video? DVD, please. DVD. Mm -hmm. Sarah, okay. thank you very much indeed for playing. Cheers, Owen, Sarah. commiserations. Sorry, Owen. Yeah. Triumphant. Another You're triumph. You're so rubbish, Carl. Carl. You are so rubbish. There you got it right. Oh dear. Rubbish. Well done, Steve. Jealous. Jealous. I love rubbish. It. I thought it was a great one. It's nice one. 104.9 XFM. Uh, you alright? This is Carl, uh, producer of, uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant. They're not about today. Ricky's on holiday. Uh, Steve couldn't be bothered. So, um, I'm left here with all the dats. Uh, that's a digital audio tape, uh, of all the, uh, of all the shows they've done since they've been here over the last, uh, I don't know, year and a half or something. So, uh, we'll play you uh, some of the best bits. Alright, so, uh, here's the first bit. I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably, and he just looked at me, I don't know, and he was looking at me, and I looked back and he went, have you ever used a Y-front properly? Genius. It's a great question, because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has no. It, does anyone use their Y-front properly? And by that, I mean, get your winky out of the little sort of, um, slot provided, as yeah. opposed to like, put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Y-front properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> I caught you. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. And get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't prove I was gay, I double bluffed you. Because <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. <laughs> I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him, uh, did you see that film last night? Gay lord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. <laughs> yeah. Take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, is well. True. It originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone. 
anyone listening who's- and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie when they ask me. Yeah. I don't even use, uh, sort of, flies. No? Usually. I sort of, just, sort of, sort of, pull my wife on, uh, my, sort of, tracksuit. So yeah. That's why I wear, sort of, like, elasticated <laughs> waistbands all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of, like- <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah, you gotta get in there with the <laughs> minimum of effort. Yeah, we and out. Sure, sure. Often I won't shake. No, oh, no. To my detriment, because <laughs> it often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg <laughs> and you wish I hadn't and you're thinking, <laughs> what if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell or see it. What? <laughs> it's like what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fill it with the microphone. Everyone well, I was just looking that. at what it was underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know when my parents bought this book. I assume it's sort of from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are- Generally, the facts are quite sensible in here, and I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like kind of just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or that this is probably or true. up in Greg's the Baker's that <laughs> Carl exactly. gets most of his facts from. <clears throat> the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But, uh, what, what, what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's gee, that's a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they have baboons serving? No, I'll but tell you what happened. It might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, <laughs> one of them could take his order, and one day when they went, um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said they're answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's, it's not, no, it's not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, cause what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're like, I have tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like, uh, working out that sort of 10%, <laughs> you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under-tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so Terrence Conrad or someone. If you do go, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on those, please don't order the banana daiquiri, because it comes half eaten. They can't help their little selves. <laughs> they really can't. They're okay with, like, you know, beef and steak and chips and all that. But you know, there's a little bag. I go, do you want <laughs> Can and you imagine that? The baboons serving at waiting tables. It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, a zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was, like, the canteen and you could go <laughs> If they were uh, serving tickets to two. Uh, yeah, exactly. one child row. Okay, go through there. Okay. I think they should do other things, like in, you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of thing. Pelican, yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. According to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's <laughs> what they did. <laughs> that was how they it, did it. Definitely, right? yeah. Just, just, uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. It <laughs> was, do you know them two gay American men who have, have tigers? Okay, the two gay ones, oh, yeah, go on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then, or- yeah, If you on. shave a tiger's head- <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Right, okay. You gotta treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head- Not just its head, its whole body. If oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. So, I thought you- I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then, go yeah, on. if you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. skin, the skin's- Is it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, like, all the way through. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's- I remembered that, like, I was watching- Was watching that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> 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 I shaved a tiger and it's still striving. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know a polar bear? Polar bear's, um, skin is actually, um, black, and its fur is transparent, not white, and it gives the illusion. So it, uh, it gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If its skin's black, a polar bear skin's skin, black, and its fur is translucent, and its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we? Well, it's just because the the light hits it and the sun reflects off. Yeah, it. and it makes it look white. Yeah, so if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at night, hair. it would be black. <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you embarrassed yourself. Play a record. XFM one hundred four point nine. Lovely that one. Now. Again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. <sighs> I had lunch with him. And, uh, we were chatting and having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, <laughs> oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't. Yeah. 
Oh, God. Can't believe So it was the tree that did it. <laughs> and I mean, it was probably the only- and, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, um, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the way, but I told him this story, um, it was a- it was a short, it was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And, um, what it was, it started off just had been a car crash, you see it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate and he was going, Dave. And he sort of he, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at. He goes, "Oh no, Dave, Dave!" And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror. And then it sort of went black, and you realised that he was just a head, and it had been his body. Oh wow! Right. Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution, um, people experienced consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh, no, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken, it would work. <laughs> Imagine remaking <laughs> that film, but it's two chickens <laughs> in horrendous car crash. <laughs> It Their own fault for driving. <laughs> 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 it would work. Uh, no. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went, oh, no, five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly and something like, when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen it. Oh, he's, he's, get, he, he's annoyed, yeah. Do you have a favourite, uh, Tells the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where, uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he said, I can get you out of here. He said, what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, yeah, that means there's a, been a, yeah, a uh, dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into, like, the, uh, place where all the dead bodies are. Get on the, get in the first coffin on the right. And then I'll come along and carry you out and you can run away and escape, yeah. right? So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right? And then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but That's that, the that point. it doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl, all it right, really matters. Okay. Listen, I, I don't right. know if I'm gonna ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the f end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back and she has to get no, buried alive. Be better than yeah. that. So she gets in the coffin. And, uh, she's lying there for ages. She's buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere, so she's thinking, this is it, I'm getting out. And, uh, and she's lying there for ages and thinking, why aren't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd- he'd help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is- <laughs> How bad is that? <laughs> So it is quite important that she's buried alive then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she's buried alive and yeah. can't get out. Yeah. 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 Makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, actually I'm getting out of here. Yeah. This isn't gonna work. Look at Carl's face, having told yeah. that, he's so pleased, his face is lit up, he's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen Is that your favourite horror thing ever? What was that one you told me about with the, uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, this is, though, this we? is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales of Inexpect, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail, um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like, might be a priest or a doctor or something like, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died, and he owes, uh, a hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want to so just pay him, yeah. right? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And he did, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve. Is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. Yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but, 
that. More than that, I don't understand how a video is going to be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. I can't even nod it like yeah. you caught me out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do 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 Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises, isn't Occasional it? Occasional groans. Yeah. Right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought you were gonna point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. I haven't yeah. thought of that. Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the <laughs> cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> now she's a good looking lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 104.9, XFM, hello, uh, I'm Carl. Ricky and, uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve aren't here. So we're, uh, we're playing through some of the best bits. I say the best bits, uh, it's the bits I came across first. I mean, I'm not, I'm not wasting my time, I'm, I'm a busy man, you know what I mean? So, um, here's, here's another bit. What did you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about do this? You, do you know what, what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, it, it, choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this or, is the, or this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. What will us three look like in the future? If listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? Fine, yeah. Well, we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought- that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember when- wh when we- you know, I was growing up on this estate- This is gonna be good. Go on. No. No, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So, growing up on this estate, and there was a- there was this woman about four houses down, right, who's a bit rough, <laughs> alright? Didn't fancy her. Oh, god no. Right, <laughs> but she had a Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. What it, was she? It was a very- So, like, being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What but, did she look like? But anyone can- Tattoos? Clean up. Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which- even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make a place look nice. Yeah. Right? But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Eddie, whoa, 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 Eddie. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did they get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> Must have gone. you seen horse <laughs> it? No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of- <laughs> <laughs> right? and, um, oh, that's great. I'd Did Big out. Jake come <laughs> looking for it? I, I, I'd been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, so let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> 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 Where did he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catlin rustling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? And how long did he have it for? Until Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, I'll be- Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what <laughs> do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse. No, I exactly. don't think- That's what I'm saying, I don't think they would've bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so always to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, well, so what? I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. uh, and you know, sort of go back to, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This is what? And when I, when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This like, is genius. It just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? 
Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's play a record. Story. Let's play a record and come back to this. It's always been just unravel and unravel. It's been gone for hours. Let's play a track. Deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse, just walking around the land. I come from the West Country. I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and a a rediffusion telly and this horse going. I'm fed up in it. Exactly. This is really. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that line number oh, one. Yeah, God. the classic from the first album, Sick uh, I'm Waiting for the Man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. From that classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground and, uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So, we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man, and, uh, we got onto, uh, um, We got onto, genetically, uh, genetically modified babies, but and somehow- And then Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto, he was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was- Cause you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the, yeah. the mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you- But, but well, what I'm on. trying to do is, like, make a picture for you so you understand- What does she look like? Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, I know disrespect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be Pauline Quirk. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from, I don't know where, there was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did but they get didn't caught? have it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse No, no, what there. happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? But forget, well, I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making overweight. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me ma'am for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you any? Yeah, so loads. So they, w did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. <sighs> but I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. Because it's a bit rough. So, as I went- The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they've <laughs> been, they been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. And it looked quite happy and everything, because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a central you know, heating, three piece suite, and sure. a telly and that? Telly and that. No, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari, right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Coming on sixty four, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know, like homeless people always have dogs. And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that- <laughs> No, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse was- was doing alright for yeah. itself. Do you know what I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. Right. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's- that's- what, That's what by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family- it was a bit- what were we talking about? It was about cloning- Genetically modified kids and yeah. all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right. Now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It so, could happen, Rick. <laughs> so- Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And, uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve, Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. And Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So, then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family who had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. 
And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good-looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God. No. Was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. It's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> 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 and chasing cars and that, and it became <laughs> an ugly kid. It's definitely uh, Liam Gallagher. <laughs> And uh, that's, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Oh, <laughs> life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. <laughs> but am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. All right. This is Carl, the uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. And now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's. It's the re-education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to- or Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film. You'll know what I mean. Um, uh, and, uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on- on happiness and stuff, and general well-being. He's not a big happiness, uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've- you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because- a lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing- Well, you say them every day. <laughs> well, the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um, what I've done is, remember that program on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um- <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel yeah. 4. Are you just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, come in, silly Carl. come in. Yeah, TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Right? <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, then, go on. Well, okay. I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. We'll write down yours, yeah. A, B, or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine and we'll sure. see how it Okay, works. Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm l I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know, don't no, worry, no. We're, we're clever. No, no, we know, we know, we can't see. Yeah, it's like yeah. call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on. Okay. Then. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> 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 Oh, God, my head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang no, on. this might not be Carl's. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point. No, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you gotta put with the rain. Yeah, okay. okay. Alright. Alright, yeah. Okay, hang on. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, come on. It stinks a bit. But, if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! <laughs> I don't know what to say! Imagine this in faking it! Imagine their faces when he says that! And they're going, oh my god! Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Go on in. Alright. Uh, first one. Nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yeah. now, cherish your yeah. time. Okay. Because you, you, uh, you can't get it back and, yeah. you know, That's the way um, I saw it. carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but, you know, rainbow's beautiful, but it comes because of the rain, which you might not like, so yeah. make the most of everything and... Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, <laughs> but if you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. <laughs> right, no, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. Right, no, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it didn't. No, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one, but, um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it, it, 
it's n very similar to, uh, the putting up with the rain and the rainbow, but why, that's good. Why do you think that? Well. What, what does mine mean? Well, uh, ev well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right, so see, I, I didn't look at it like that. What, what do you look at? Uh, I, I kind of thought- Was yours more specifically about cat food, <laughs> <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> right. you know normally they like, it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something, you know, much well, bigger. Well, no, the way I- I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow, rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No. It was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. I've what, used what, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So like, um, <laughs> my girlfriend, yeah? Um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, because I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you gotta feed it, but because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll pull with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> squeeze its little head. <laughs> no, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, well, that's just the thing that I do with cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yep. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, 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 but Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, well I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> And he, he came up with the life as a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you say, oh yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Cos I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my, um, uh, salamander, it's not a euphemism, <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on, and he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, obviously planning to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on its mind, and it's, <laughs> the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the, like, the lid ripped up a little bit. <laughs> And I'll be looking up there. Yeah. And it's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 like an IV and be down the market. <laughs> Class. Class. <laughs> Rock the I love the fact you had at least three minutes to get that right. To I know. To prepare and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. th this would, oh, this would blow your mind. He came in, do you know what he'd bought for himself at, at about ten? Penguins. Mm. Who buys penguins still? No. Or wagon wheels. Oh, I've never liked wagon wheels. <laughs> not been a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's The Clash and Rock the Casbah. Mm -hmm. Um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother in law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, and I think moving in with my sister, and I was about like, um, I don't know, 13, um, and so he was about, I don't know, 30, and I moved it, and uh, he brought round all, um, uh, his records when he was storage to, to leave them at our house, right, mm. and he had all these old sort of records, 50s and 60s records, no, I was like, and, uh, um, and, uh, they, uh, put them upstairs, and I was looking through them, and, uh, it's just all like Elvis stuff and Beatles stuff. And there was a mate of mine who loved Elvis, okay? Oh. And he had, um, well, uh. loads of chemicals. <laughs> yeah. He had loads of chemicals and I was into chemistry. And, uh, he said, let's swap me some chemicals for them. So I sort of nicked about five Elvis singles and I got all these chemicals. And, uh, and then the guilt just hit me. I just thought, well, he's gonna notice that. And I just, uh, one night I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum. And she went, all right, well, I won't tell him, but you've gotta be good. And it's sort of like I was just really, really good for a year. <laughs> and then I remember, um, when I was about 18, uh, my brother was talking about it and he said, did you ever, um, uh, play those records I left for you? <laughs> Brilliant. He told my mum, he said, these are for Ricky. She just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't she? <sighs> she, she used opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And, uh, that was it. That's, that's but, why I was good. <laughs> but you've that's never, you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't Except know. that spate of, uh, of shoplifting after that <laughs> to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round, uh, and, uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I, I just, oh, that's it was terrible. I, I remember, um, I, I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well. Um, and, 
I, I, when I was going through it, mm. um, I used to just, just little things, just like magic markers and, uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And one day, right, uh, that me, me mate, Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you. And, uh, she said, what about? She said, I don't want to talk about it over the phone. So she goes, oh, right. Well, yeah, come round tonight then. So anyway, my mum sees me. She, she don't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round. What have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh, God. I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like, what? So oh, not, not big stuff. I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I'll just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Works out at 7.2 <laughs> per day. So, um... How so many calculators do you need? So, anyway, <laughs> so it was when that phase... You failed maths, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right, oh, yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, um... <laughs> so, anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed to, like... Computers will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confess to nicking magic in the back <laughs> yeah. of battery. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> confess to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. She said, like, oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. <laughs> that's great. I didn't send oh. the sort of thing to yours. Uh, and did you and um, he went, hold on, I'm not to work out the interest on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 bank ten percent. She'll owe you four yeah. pounds forty. Uh, <laughs> oh, did, so, so your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um and, uh, I, did 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 uh did she mention she that went, you I just, I just stuff with your, with that other because yeah, what I'm saying is presumably you got no, your no, mate no, in trouble. No, 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 no. Right, you know, no that's no. great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, yeah, we've been on. waiting for what, what are you gonna play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, window. brilliant. Cooper Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Sex <laughs> FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they me. should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. Easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so, uh, m me and, uh, me and Carl went out, uh, for a beer and it was, uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoy Start, yourself. We started yeah, off good. and you met my mate Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin that Robin, you learned? do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his, his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He, uh, what I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get him. He never answered me. He was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. But I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now, straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about well, where? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Did you mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Th uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin why would he get so sort of uppity about it? Well, because imagine it's if, not true. imagine if he, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time. <laughs> He was with somebody for the first time and Robin was, uh, just met them. He tells that- he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Robin! I also- I, <laughs> I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms yep. was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food and he believed it. I I'll said tell to, you why though. I said to Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out and he believed it. But Steve, right, do you remember that story about th three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army, he went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever, he was messing about in the woods, um... Messing <laughs> about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, w he walked through some lake and I think he'd cut his toe or something on, on something and some worm of some sort crawled in the, in the gash. Yeah. And, um, it, it was in his body and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part or something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So they wrapped Where some Where the skull is. So they wrapped some bacon. <laughs> He did. Ah, that's all right. Everyone... So he's gone in via the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. <laughs> we put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard, the skull. There was, there was a reason for it. 
and it was like they, they um, stuck some bacon on his head. And <laughs> As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said, every, you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. <laughs> Including even worms. A worm. Again, even, a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, they, <laughs> they, they, oh, they remember love Remember bacon. last week, remember last week when I said about the little fella with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a Viet there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little white maggot or some sort. <laughs> like you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes. <laughs> and so in order <laughs> to get it out of the body, they strapped bacon to his head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, what the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh. oh dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story and um, um, right. just it was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, bacon. So this is why <laughs> I, I, when- And so when what, the, wor the worm burrowed out of his head <laughs> to get the bacon? Get to the bacon. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I this is, that. this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Right. Because in a way- You know Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, I, I would do really think that Robin, well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's <laughs> a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you, d you do daft things like that as a kid. <laughs> right. See, he is the telling Ricky Gervais though. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, bless him. Okay. And, and then anyway, then, uh, Robin left and, uh, I tried to chase him but he got away <laughs> he knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints and then, uh, Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you, can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it, I haven't spoke to him all week so let me run it by him. Okay, play records. Cause, uh, you know. What we got? We've got, uh, one of Steve's Yeah, well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the, uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the, uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it, though my girlfriend, uh, worked on it. But, yeah. um, you were gonna play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually. Bizarrely enough, I was gonna play some I Am Clute, and, uh, this is from, as I say, the, uh, the Teachers soundtrack, and this is called To You. It's a good track. That's I Am Clute, and a track called To You from the, uh, Teachers soundtrack. That's also got, uh, I noticed the Electric Soft Parade, the Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder, uh, Turing Break, Smoky Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl, uh, has just had confirmation. He's looking smug because someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> He's got standards. Explain. Strokes. Hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes, yes. So, Carl, concentrate. Yeah, go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped around the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle... Yeah, always carry some... Bit of Danish. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your, uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these, um, uh... Well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, st we'll start off with the, uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This, this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on, like, a Friday. Yeah. So when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and mm. stuff like that. So when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know, What's that saying? Like a pig in, you know? I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He loads nearly of said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right? Is that the saying? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like he didn't. <laughs> 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 Otherwise, he'd have been in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's he's culpable for our actions. Because exactly. he's a producer. So technically, <laughs> oh. that twat's in charge. Go yep. on. Right. So anyway, so there's loads of food, and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this, and chocolate biscuits, and uh, you know penguins and stuff. Bacon. So, and um, bacon. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. <laughs> so, um, so, anyway, my mum and dad's putting the food away. Me and our kid are like, he's already grabbed something, gone back upstairs. 
<laughs> it's like feral children. <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire. <laughs> <laughs> and then they run upstairs. <laughs> it would, it, well, they just sit under the bed, gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter. So, so I <laughs> saw, um, do you remember Mr. Freeze Pops? I do, yeah. So right. Well, they're kind of like popsicles, icicles. Yeah, but really long, like yeah, a foot yeah, long, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought, I'll have one of them, so I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back, right? Straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Swallow it right straight away, yeah. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? So <laughs> what, I was down like, your oh. shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh god, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd ate. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so, f f so quick. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sort of, Tapping me mum on the back, going, uh, uh, she's going, oh God, you know, he's, he's choking again because I was always choking. <laughs> if it was one thing, I don't know if I've got like a small throat, <laughs> but, but I mean, even Ricky knows I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, f a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of like swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was like bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. <laughs> I was always, God. I was always choking on stuff. Jeez. <laughs> oh, so, so anyway, she's going, oh God, what's he picked up on that now? Drop it! Drop it! And so, she hit his, hit his nose with a stick. So I was going, <laughs> choking. At this point, me, me dad had like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away and he'd gone his to- His share! I yeah. love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch like, winner takes all or whatever, <laughs> in a lounge. And I, I was in the kitchen and I was starting to like, just, I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't, I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. was like falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And um, my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me saying that's what you get for being greedy. He didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, <laughs> So he's there like that and my mum's going, oh, look at him. And my lips were going purple and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. You look like Marilyn Manson. And, uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me. And it came up, and I was all right. What, the whole right. popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, you see, that's what I don't understand. Cause there no, was nothing it, there. No, I mean, just, just a little bit, no, it swells up, doesn't it? Cause it irritated it, so it went down your, this sort of like, your epiglottis, it went down the wrong way, like it went into your air canal instead so, of your throat. And it, it sort of, it, it sort of spasms, and that's the, that's the fear. You just gotta calm it down and relax. So and in time I would have been all right yeah, anyway. you don't, um, Well no, yeah. you might have. So that's, that's so, 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 so that's hang on, one. So, but, but, so, so, no, no, but the weird thing is, like, for, like, three days after that, I felt like a sort of, a uh, special person. <laughs> I was, I went to school. I'm I did, I'm saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went, I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days, turn over <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I did. After <laughs> three days, you thought, screw it. Yeah, well, did, did the quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. Mm. Right, next that one. Weird. That's popsicle. That's popsicle hell, we we'll call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> And he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you know, oh. you, you, <laughs> you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. So you make your own rules. Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're around. spreading information well, to yeah, people. Yeah, Vital information. Giving a service. Yeah. And no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, can you imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's driving <laughs> around. I know, I can't. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so oh, anyway, I, I loved it, and even though I only got like fifty p a day, right? No matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and uh, go and do the round. And um, why did you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at five thirty, <laughs> so I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, "Why didn't you watch the Pink Panther?" And then, and then went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? Go so 4.30 four I was up, up and about, and this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow, I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it, I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on, with the fur on. I had, like, waterproof pants, and I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out, 
and tried to open the door and it was locked. So, oh, God, so, uh, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out, so I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out the window, and I'd, I'd, I'm like, trying to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, like The yeah, little yeah, arm yeah, goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding onto the, like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, he, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a- <laughs> He's heard that wily trick in Manchester <laughs> before. <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing. A big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just that hold on for your dear life and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why Let didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's God. at that point where you've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time he got upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> listen around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so- And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! <laughs> Pink Panther. Hurry up! Panther. Ever so pink! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, cause that, I must have been about 30 foot in the air. So he, uh, uh, I'll just cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near death experiences and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm gonna die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well I don't check my balls. <laughs> right? <laughs> he said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> 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 Carl, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check your like feel? Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track, let's come back to it. All right, this is Carl, the, uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits, hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. Oh. His homework was to come up with those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we might, we maybe should give an, a, an example of the, uh, Oh, um, genre. Romeo and Juliet, right, Romeo's asleep on the bed, Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass, what happened? And you ask all these stupid questions, and it's, Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again, Awful. what am I thinking? Yeah. Yeah, come on then, Carl. Right, um, yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor, right, he's cut his head, blood's coming out of his head, and all his mates come running up. And they're all stood round him. Yeah. And, uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. That why, is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uh, laughing, but it's probably as good as the oh, real Oh, absolutely. Ones. A bloke's fallen with his... Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mates come running his, up his, tonight. Oh. Wasn't it impo was it important that his head was cut? Um... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, would, it, would, it, would it have been okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. What, what's your answer? No, you meant to answer questions. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, where's it turns out? You go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of motorcycle stunt team or a parachute. Why, why didn't they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something. Or well, yeah, but if you mark, mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> Angry. What? They're parachutists. <laughs> why, can't they, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the sky. But he's on the floor dead. Well, yeah, they, they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor as they're well. They're walking, aren't they? Yeah, well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They're stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking they're at him. They're soldiers. Why? But why? If they're Because it might be in a battle zone. They, they might have their zone. helmets on. And he's, he's been right. shot in the head. No. The, well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. That one works. That one works. Unless you've given us a piece of information where that doesn't work, what, yeah. what, what's the difference? Why, d why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't, don't <laughs> think it matters as much. If they're in the trench, they're already <laughs> guarded a little bit. So th they could take their hats off. It's the best mate, for God's sake. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I was dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? 
What kind no, of hats are they? The answer. No! Don't get ratty! What right. kind of hats are they? Baseball well, hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Wow! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are oh, not that the moon happened, it was set yeah, up, wasn't it, in the studio, we know that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Carl, what's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? <laughs> because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly! <laughs> right. Let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl, oh. while you think about what you've done. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've uh, embarrassed Let's yourself. play some classic Swede. Yeah, and this is for David and Kieran, I think, who wanted a <laughs> bit of, bit of butler. XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Bays with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and, uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think, it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, he probably came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. You there was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's this well, gun's not clean? Well, I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were well, shiny. Well, he's well, he's got to do that, it's more distant. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know like, what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, uh, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's what I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the, the fault runs or, you know, the golf's are, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? I go, you hit the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, <laughs> yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I go, right, I'm not gonna go. And I go, <laughs> exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. Should be fine, yeah. Just like that. It, does anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> then. <laughs> my, um, brother, my brother went into the army, right, cos, um, cos he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. <laughs> And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight? Eighty-one, right? And he joined <laughs> back in like eighty-one or something. And uh, he, 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 I don't know, he was an older shot or something. Oh yeah. And uh, he wrote back to me, mum, saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> what bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's all like, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining, uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Uh, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to her, my, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go. Which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, w we'll see how it goes. But can what? you tell what her- What do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, s Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, cos she was really- she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really- oh, please, cos I've promised her I'll- say you wanna go. No, please, say you wanna go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, you're, I mean the sergeant. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do- But you that's got, ludicrous! That's, I love it that. Oh, we went over the top. Pilton, no, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this- is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be you in order. They- you- it, cos I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go, go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's going, my mum says don't yeah. go. Yeah. You didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely Bill, wrote this yourself. You're, you're, you're gonna have to just, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh no, I was saying, where the, the army other soldiers going around just going, wah! <laughs> Bilkington! <laughs> no, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, 
going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've Honest made that Honest to God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your- your brother's a genius. I love this, I love this. First of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, go and let him up, and he goes, oh God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is- where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's- where is he? Um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is- no, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of fags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, did, I was Did your mum phone up and say, let him off? <laughs> <laughs> so let him off this time. Can he- yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about eleven years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off, but I think- if you're a certain type of person, it's it's good for it you. It didn't straight him either, did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank. He was shagging someone no, behind but their he was, back. It's yeah. really weird. It's like back then he was like a proper adult, and he had a house, and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he I, I, I seriously haven't seen him for about eleven or twelve years. Oh, so I haven't even spoken. It always uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down? Because it's just too stressful. <laughs> this is what I'd like to leave you uh, with, a song for the ladies. Start this on the edge of town from the amazing album of the same name, Springsteen. See you next week. Bye.